we are at our last lesson. We're on the fifth mistake, and we'll hit number six on our next module. So this is the end of this module. And our fifth mistake, it's a little bit tricky. It's writing from the wrong perspective. And, you know, the best example of this that I can give is what we just talked about in the previous lesson. It's the objective statement. And you have a lot of fancy words, but the objective statement basically says, I want a job. And the person reading your resume, especially if they're the employer, says, well, I don't care. Okay? Because the fact is they don't care that you want a job. What they care about is they want an employee. They want to know, they want the question answered, why should I hire you? And the fact that you're good and awesome and have these talents and skills, that's the vast majority of it. You know, that may be 90% of it, but we're going to talk about tweaking it and fine-tuning it just a little bit. All right? We need to write and answer some of the questions the employer has. Let me give you some examples. There's a handout in your resources, and there's a lot more than just these three questions. I pulled a few out just to talk about it. So what is an employer thinking as they read your resume? Okay, here's a question that I ask. Number one, did the applicant tailor his or her resume for this position, or does the applicant seem to be sending out mass mailings? This is a common concern. I want to feel like you research this job, you care about this job, that you really want to come work from our company. I don't want to get the vibe from reading your resume that you went on monster.com this morning, found 100 companies, and sent out 100 resumes. If I catch a whiff of that, your resume is getting tossed, okay? I want to feel like we are the perfect fit for you and we're the only one you want to work for. By the way, I understand that's not true, but I still want to feel that way, okay? Number two, throughout his or her work experience, has the applicant enriched his or her education and work experience with additional classes, seminars, workshops, or conferences? What's going on here, and you may not even consider this, but I don't just want to hire you for this position. In a lot of cases, I want to hire you to stay with our company. I want to see that when you've taken positions, you've improved. You've gotten better. You're a much better employee a year down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road than you are when you start. Because if I have my way at most companies, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to hire you for a job and you're going to get better and better and better. And eventually we love to promote from within. I'm going to promote you and hire someone to take your place at that point in time. And what's the best way that I can see that you've become a better employer or sorry, better employee is education. You've gone out and you've learned stuff. You've improved yourself. Maybe it's certifications. Maybe it's workshops and conferences. Maybe you finished up a degree while you're working. But that's one of the great ways that I can see that you've become a better employee as you've stayed employed. Number three, is the resume believable or does the applicant appear to be padding his or her accomplishments? Real simple. When I read your resume, do I believe it? Or do I feel like you're blowing smoke up my butt? Okay, I've, it's got to be believable. I've got to feel that it's sincere and this is actually the person that I'm hiring rather than some sort of fictional person that you've created. So those are a couple of questions. Again, if you look at the handout, there's a long list of them. But think about it from the employer's perspective as you're writing this. And how do we write to that? You've seen this slide a whole bunch of times. I'm throwing it up one more time. You're going to write that summary section. For most of you, it's going to be that summary of qualifications where you're taking that top half of the first page, that prime real estate, and saying, here is why you should hire me. Here is why I'm better than the other 199 resumes that are sitting on your desk right now. Hire me, pick my resume, call me in for the interview, offer me the job, Tell me when I get started. And that's really what we're writing at that point in time. And what do we put in there? Here's a list. Feel free to add to it. But what did we do over and above the average employee? Did we save the company money? Did we work harder than anyone? Were we reliable and responsible? Did we get promoted multiple times? You know, whatever it is that we did, we're able to stress that point of here's what I'm going to bring to your company. Here's the value that I bring. All right, so we're almost at the end. I do want to give you one quick exercise to do. It's almost for fun, but there's a lot of value to it. Take your resume and give it to someone who does not know what job you're looking for. Critically important. So give it to someone who doesn't know the position, have them read it, and then ask them, what job do you think I'm applying for? You know, if they're off by a little bit, that's fine. But if they're way off when they guess, you need to go back and work on that resume because you should be... We should be able to figure out what job you're applying for by reading the resume. Another thing to ask them, would you hire me and why? Okay. And if they can't come up with any reasons, if they just try and be polite and go, oh, I don't know, I guess I'd hire you, seem like a nice guy, you know, hard worker, 
Sorry, once again, got to go back to that resume. They should be able to give specific reasons why they would hire you. All right, and if you really want to test yourself, you can do it like an HR person. Give them one minute, have them scan the resume, and then have them answer those questions and see how it goes. So that's a quick test, just a way to kind of see, okay, how's my resume look? So we're done with the fifth mistake. We're done with this module, at least as far as the lessons, and you all know what your assignment is. You know, we're in the middle of this two-week module. At the end of this module, you need to have a finished, completed, fine-tuned resume. Because after this, we're moving on. So finish it up. If you run into any problems, any questions, any concerns, even if you're just stuck, in fact, especially if you're just stuck, please contact your teacher, contact your instructor, and let them know what your problems and concerns are. We really want this to not be a form of torture. Okay? We want you to thrive at this and really walk out of here with a fine, dialed-in resume. All right, so good luck going forward. I wish you the best.